Hey class, today we are going to practice some moving analysis on ArcGIS. So let me show you a picture of what I mean. So we're going to do a few different items today. We're going to run block statistics. Um, this is where ArcGIS is looking through your data one block at a time and it's converting that data into one value. So in this example of block statistics, you're telling ArcGIS to make blocks of three cells wide by three cells. So a three by three. And it's going through every block in order, and it's assigning that block one value. You can tell it if you want that value to be the mean, or the majority, or the maximum value, or the minimum value, or range. There are some different options that you have. So go through each block and assign each block that one value. So it's simplifying the data. That's one form of statistics we're going to do today. Another is zonal statistics, which is similar in nature, where ArcGIS is going to go through these zones and assign the zones a value based on the values from another raster. So you will tell ArcGIS what the zones look like. So you'll add in um, a shape value, or I'm sorry, a shape file showing these locations. And you're going to add in your raster that has the values. And you'll tell ArcGIS how to simplify each one of those rasters. So again, do you want it to be the majority or the mean, minimum, the maximum, things like that. And it'll output with this raster with this simplified set of values. Another thing we'll run today is focal statistics. So again, similar in nature where we're taking this original raster, we're going to simplify it. But in this case, it has overlapping cells. So now instead of blocks being completely independent of each other, now it's going to move one cell at a time. So the values will uh, somewhat overlap. The last thing we're going to do today is tabulate intersection. So this is where we will tell ArcGIS the zones. And we're going to load in um, another shapefile with the features. And it will look through uh, both of your shapefiles to come up with this output showing the different zones and the different features and the area involving each of those features. What we will do then is use a pivot table to simplify the data. So we're not interested in having lots of zones showing us lots of areas of the different features. We want to just see within each zone how much is comprised of each feature. So that will make a little bit more sense in a moment. So I've already loaded in our raster with the NLCD data, and I've already loaded in the locations, our lights out, universe mailing locations. So first what we want to do is add a buffer around all those locations. Let's say we've done a literature review and we saw um, around 90 meters around each, uh, each building um, is important for our birds. Let's say looking, looking at the landscape around 90 meters. So we want to add a buffer around each location by 90 meters. So first thing we'll do is go to our analysis toolbox. We'll go to proximity, we'll go to buffer. We're going to load in the shapefile of our locations. And remember, we had already projected them to UTMs in a previous assignment. So let's call this lights out UMB 90M for 90 meters. This is where we're going to tell ArcGIS we want 90 meters, and then OK. So it's going to go through and add a 90 meter radius around each of those locations. Now we want to uh, clip out uh, 
the NLCD raster based on, so we just want to save the NLCD raster just in those offered locations. And remember, NLCD is raster, so we're not using the clip function. We're going to use the extract by mask function. So to do that, we're going to open up our spatial analyst toolbox. Now we're going to go to extraction, extract by mask. We're loading in that NLCD already projected to UTM raster. And we're going to mask it by that buffered location shape file. And let's save this as LO UMD. So let's at UMD NLCD buffer. We don't have quite enough space for 90 meter buff because we have to keep our uh, Nomenclature smaller than 13 letters or characters. And hit OK. And this is going to take a little while for it to go through that raster and just save. All right, terrific. So this worked. So now um, let's go ahead and remove the huge raster, the NLCD UMB raster, and our original locations. Let's just save our buffer and the buffer shift file and our NLCD. Uh, raster as well. Let's just save those. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is run our block statistics. And to do that, we're going to open up the spatial analyst toolbox, go to neighborhood. And this is where we're going to find uh, several different features. But we're going to first start with block statistics. We are going to input that buffered raster. And we're going to call this hello UMD block. We're going to do three cells by three cells. Because we already know um, by reading through the metadata assigned with this raster from NLCD, we already know each cell is 30 meters by 30 meters. So to get to 90 meters that we're interested in, we're going to do three cells by three cells. And we're going to change our statistics type to majority. So we are going to say uh, we're interested in our simplified statistics being the majority of each cell, so the majority value of each cell. And hit OK. So this is going to go through and run the block statistics. So let's temporarily just look at the block statistics. So you see how simplified that is compared to, to this. So you see a lot less information. Um, well, that's detailed because it, it took a more complicated raster and made it a lot more simple. So let's open up an attribute table to take a look. So by looking at the legend, you would know 21, 22, 23, 24. Those are all representing different values of urbanization or of imperviousness. So anywhere from open impervious areas to, to very dense, high, impervious areas. And then the other features you would look up from the legend. But so this is telling us how many, the count of the number of cells. And now these, these cells now are 90 meter by 90 meter instead of the 30 meter by 30 meter. So that's block statistics for you. Another thing to look at is uh, the row ID. So remember how we have to have a unique ID associated with every row. So that's our first round that we're doing, block statistics. The next thing I wanted us to do was zonal statistics. And to get to that, we're going to go to the spatial analyst toolbox. Now we're going to go to zonal. So zonal.
So this is where we're going to tell it that zone. So we're still going to work with our Befford NLCD raster. But this time our I'm sorry, we're going to start with the buffer as the feature. So our shape file is, uh, so this is the shape of, that we want each zone to be. So let's pull this up again so you remember. So these shapes are going to be our different zones. And our raster is going to be that NLCD buffered raster. So remember the more complicated raster, not the simplified raster. And for the zone field, let's look at our attribute table of the buffered locations. So the FID is the zone. So each individual location we want to serve as the shape for the zone. We're going to change that zone field to FID. Output raster, let's call this L O U N D zonal and hit OK. So it's going to go through again and simplify that data. So let's take a look at. Just that feature. So you see now our raster is very different. So now it's showing um, this range of values based on different uh, colors. So this is a way to, to graphically represent the, the different data to simplify it. And you can always change the color scheme when you go into properties and go to symbology, you can always change these colors. Properties. So sometimes that makes it a little bit more intuitive. Okay, so you can do something like this to represent um, the simplified raster. All right, so now let's compare this to zonal statistics. So we can start to see the difference when we have overlapping cells. So the first two that we've done, the block statistics and the zonal statistics, statistics um, has not had overlapping cells. Now, for the first time, we're going to do overlapping cells. So for focal statistics, we'll go to the spatial analyst toolbox. We'll go to neighborhood. And then focal. Our input raster is not buffered. NLCD output, we're going to call this LOUMD focal. We're going to still keep it as three cells by three cells. We're going to still keep it as majority because I want you to see the difference. So now it's going to go through. So you see it is not uh, not quite as simplified as our other. And this still has an attribute table, again, with uh, the counts, the values of 21, 22, 23, 24 was NLCD's um, representation of different imperviousness levels, and it shows the different counts. So that's focal statistics. 